In algebraic geometry, the problem of resolution of singularities asks whether every algebraic variety V has a resolution, a non-singular variety W with a proper birational map WV, for varieties over fields of characteristic zero this was proved in Hironaka, while for varieties over fields of characteristic P it is an open problem in dimensions at least four. Definitions Originally the problem of resolution of singularities was to find a non-singular model for the function field of a variety X. In other words a complete non-singular variety X with the same function field. In practice it is more convenient to ask for a different condition as follows. A variety X has a resolution of singularities if we can find a non-singular variety X and a proper birational map from X to X. The condition that the map is proper is needed to exclude trivial solutions, such as taking x to be the subvariety of non-singular points of x. More generally, it is often useful to resolve the singularities of a variety x embedded into a larger variety w. Suppose we have a closed embedding of x into a regular variety w. The strict transform x of x is regular and transverse to the exceptional locus of the resolution morphism. The map from the strict transform of x to x is an isomorphism away from the singular points of x. W is constructed by repeatedly blowing up regular closed subvarieties of W or more strongly regular subvarieties of X, transverse to the exceptional locus of the previous blowings up. The construction of W is functorial for smooth morphisms to W and embeddings of W into a larger variety. Morphisms in any reasonable way. The morphism from X to X does not depend on the embedding of X in W, or in general, the sequence of blowings up is functorial with respect to smooth morphisms. Hironaka showed that there is a strong desingularization satisfying the first three conditions above whenever X is defined over a field of characteristic zero, and his construction was improved by several authors so that it satisfies all conditions above. Resolution of singularities of curves Every algebraic curve has a unique, non-singular projective model, which means that all resolution methods are essentially the same because they all construct this model. In higher dimensions this is no longer true. Varieties can have many different non-singular projective models. Collar lists about 20 ways of proving resolution of singularities of curves. Newton's method resolution of singularities of curves was essentially first proved by Newton, who showed the existence of Puizu series for a curve from which resolution follows easily. Riemann's method Riemann constructed a smooth Riemann surface from the function field of a complex algebraic curve, which gives a resolution of its singularities. This can be done over more general fields by using the set of discrete valuation rings of the field as a substitute for the Riemann surface. Albanese's method Albanese's method consists of taking a curve that spans a projective space of sufficiently large dimension and repeatedly projecting down from singular points to projective spaces of smaller dimension. This method extends to higher dimensional varieties and shows that any n-dimensional variety has a projective model with singularities of multiplicity at most n, which when n is 1 means that there are no singular points. Normalization Muli and Zariski gave a one-step method of resolving singularities of a curve by taking the normalization of the curve. Normalization removes all singularities in co-dimension 1, so it works for curves but not in higher dimensions. Valuation rings Another one-step method of resolving singularities of O-curve is to take a space of valuation rings of the function field of the curve. This space can be made into a non-singular projective curve birational to the original curve. Blowing up repeatedly blowing up the singular points of a curve will eventually resolve the singularities. The main task with this method is to find a way to measure the complexity of a singularity and to show that blowing up improves this measure. There are many ways to do this. 
For example, one can use the arithmetic genus of the curve. Noether's method Noether's method takes a plane curve and repeatedly applies quadratic transformations. Eventually this produces a plane curve whose only singularities are ordinary multiple points. Bettini's method Bettini's method is similar to Noether's method. It starts with a plane curve and repeatedly applies birational transformations to the plane to improve the curve. The birational transformations are more complicated than the quadratic transformations used in Noether's method but produce the better result that the only singularities are ordinary double points. Resolution of singularities of surfaces. Surfaces have many different non-singular projective models. However a surface still has a unique minimal resolution that all others factor through. In higher dimensions there need not be a minimal resolution. There were several attempts to prove resolution for surfaces over the complex numbers by Del Pezzo, Levi, Severi, Chisini, and Albanese. But Zarisky points out that none of these early attempts are complete, and all of Agat some critical point of the argument. The first rigorous proof was given by Walker, and an algebraic proof for all fields of characteristic zero was given by Zarisky. Abhyanka gave a proof for surfaces of non-zero characteristic. Resolution of singularities has also been shown for all excellent two-dimensional schemes by Lippmann. Zarashi's method Zarashi's method of resolution of singularities for surfaces is to repeatedly alternate normalizing the surface with blowing up points. Although this will resolve the singularities of surfaces by itself, Zarisky used a more roundabout method. He first proved a local uniformization theorem showing that every valuation of a surface could be resolved, then used the compactness of the zarisky riemann surface to show that it is possible to find a finite set of surfaces such that the center of each valuation is simple on at least one of these surfaces. And finally by studying birational maps between surfaces showed that this finite set of surfaces could be replaced by a single non-singular surface. Young's method by applying strong embedded resolution for curves. Young reduces to a surface with only rather special singularities which are then dealt with explicitly. The higher dimensional version of this method is De Jong's method. Albanese method in general the analogue of Albanese's method for curves shows that for any variety one can reduce to singularities of order at most n, where n is the dimension. For surfaces this reduces to the case of singularities of order 2, which are easy enough to do explicitly. Abhyanka's method Abhyanka proved resolution of singularities for surfaces over a field of any characteristic by proving a local uniformization. Theorem for valuation rings. The hardest case is valuation rings of rank 1 whose valuation group is a non-discrete subgroup of the rational numbers. The rest of the proof follows Zarishi's method. Aronaka's method Aronaka's method for arbitrary characteristic zero varieties gives a resolution method for surfaces, which involves repeatedly blowing up points or smooth curves in the singular set. Lippmann's method Lippmann showed that a surface Y has a disingularization if and only if its normalization is finite over Y and analytically normal, and has only finitely many singular points. In particular if Y is excellent then it has a disingularization. His method was to consider normal surfaces Z with a birational proper map to Y and show that there is a minimal on with minimal possible arithmetic genus. He then shows that all singularities of this minimal Z are pseudo-rational, and shows that pseudo-rational singularities can be resolved by repeatedly blowing up points. Resolution of singularities in higher dimensions. The problem of resolution of singularities in higher dimensions is notorious for many incorrect published proofs and announcements of proofs that never appeared. Zarashi's method for three folds the resolution of singularities was proved in characteristic zero by Zarashi. He first proved a theorem about local uniformization evaluation rings valid for varieties of any dimension over any field of characteristic zero. 
He then showed that the zariski riemann space evaluations is quasi-compact, implying that there is a finite family of models of any projective variety such that any valuation has a smooth center over at least one of these models. The final and hardest part of the proof, which uses the fact that the variety is of dimension 3 but which works for all characteristics, is to show that given two models one can find a third that resolves the singularities that each of the two given models resolve. Abhyanka's method Abhyanka proved resolution of singularities for three folds in characteristic greater than 6. The restriction on the characteristic arises because a Pianka shows that it is possible to resolve ever singularity of a threefold of multiplicity less than the characteristic, and then uses Albanese's method to show that singularities can be reduced to those of multiplicity at most, equals 3, equals 6. Kutkowski gave a simplified version of a Pianka's proof. Cossart and Pilton proved resolution of singularities are three folds in all characteristics by proving local uniformization in dimension at most three, and then checking that Zarashi's proof that this implies resolution for three folds still works in the positive characteristic case. Aronaka's method resolution of singularities in characteristic zero in all dimensions was first proved by Hironaka. He proved that it was possible to resolve singularities of varieties over fields of characteristic zero by repeatedly blowing up along non-singular subvarieties, using a very complicated argument by induction on the dimension. Simplified versions of his formidable proof were given by several people, including Beer Stone and Milman, Villamayor, Inchinas and Villamayor, Inchinas and Hauser, Vlodacic, Koller. Some of the recent proofs are about a tenth of the length of Hironaka's original proof, and are easy enough to give in an introductory graduate course. For an expository account of the theorem, see and for a historical discussion see. De Jong's method De Jong found a different approach to resolution of singularities, generalizing Jung's method for surfaces which was used by Bogomolov and Pantiv and by Abramovich and De Jong to prove resolution of singularities in characteristic zero. De Jong's method gave a weaker result for varieties of all dimensions in characteristic p, which was strong enough to act as a substitute for resolution for many purposes. De Jong proved that for any variety x over a field there is a dominant proper morphism which preserves the dimension from a regular variety onto x. This need not be a birational map, so is not a resolution of singularities, as it may be generically finite to 1 and so involves a finite extension of the function field of x. De Jong's idea was to try to represent X as a fibration over a smaller space Y with fibers that are curves, then eliminate the singularities of Y by induction on the dimension, then eliminate the singularities in the fibers. Resolution for schemes and status of the problem It is easy to extend the definition of resolution to all schemes. Not all schemes have resolutions of their singularities. Groth and showed that if a locally no Ethereum scheme X has the property that one can resolve the singularities of any finite integral scheme over X, then X must be quasi-excellent. Groth and also suggested that the converse might hold. In other words, if a locally no Ethereum scheme X is reduced and quasi-excellent, then it is possible to resolve its singularities. When X is defined over a field of characteristic zero, this follows from Hironaka's theorem, and when X has dimension at most two it was proved by Lippmann. In general it would follow if it is possible to resolve the singularities of all integral complete local rings. Hauser gave a survey of work on the unsolved characteristic P resolution problem, method of proofing characteristic zero. The lingering perception that the proof of resolution is very hard gradually diverged from reality. It is feasible to prove resolution in the last two weeks of a beginning algebraic geometry course. There are many constructions of strong desingularization but all of them give essentially the same result. 
In every case the global object is replaced by local data. With this local data the centers of blowing up are defined. The centers will be defined locally and therefore it is a problem to guarantee that they will match up into a global center. This can be done by defining what blowings up are allowed to resolve each ideal. Done appropriately, this will make the centers match automatically. Another way is to define a local invariant depending on the variety and the history of the resolution so that the centers consist of the maximum locus of the invariant. The definition of this is made such that making this choice is meaningful, giving smooth centers transversal to the exceptional devices. In either case the problem is reduced to resolve singularities of the tuple formed by the ideal sheaf and the extra data. This tuple is called a marked ideal and the set of points in which the order of the ideal is larger than d is called its ghost support. The proof that there is a resolution for the marked ideals is done by induction on dimension. The induction breaks in two steps. Functorial desingularization of marked ideal of dimension n minus 1 implies functorial desingularization of marked ideals of maximal order of dimension n. Functorial desingularization of marked ideals of maximal order of dimension n implies functorial desingularization of marked ideal of dimension n. Here we say that a marked ideal is of maximal order if at some point of its ghost support the order of the ideal is equal to d. A key ingredient in the strong resolution is the use of the Hilbert-Samuel function of the local rings of the points in the variety. This is one of the components of the resolution invariant.